Welcome to Movement and Function. I'm Beth Wagner, and today I'm going to show you a specific trigger point release technique to resolve muscle knots in your neck. I'm going to address three specific muscle areas. One is the upper trapezius muscle, this muscle that runs along the top of your shoulder and up into your neck. The second is the levator scapula muscle. This is the muscle that connects the top of your shoulder blade up into your neck. And finally, the suboccipitals, a group of muscles that live at the base of your skull. Trigger points, otherwise known as muscle knots, are simply areas of tight, congested, or contracted tissue, either somewhere in the muscle belly or at the spot where the muscle meets connective tissue. When there's a trigger point or a muscle knot, that tight, congested area doesn't move very well. Trigger points are caused by such things as overuse, repetitive use, or even uh, consistent poor posture. The specific technique that I'm going to show you today is called pin and stretch. This is a type of trigger point release that doesn't require any other tool other than your fingertips. There are a lot of different tools out there on the market to use for trigger point release, and there's a lot of information already out there about those. So in this video, I wanted to show you just a simple way to get in there and release those trigger points yourself. We'll start with the left upper trapezius muscle. Starting with tall, comfortable posture, your chest lifted, shoulder blades down and relaxed, and a little bit of a chin tuck. Place your right index and middle finger in the middle of your upper trapezius muscle, somewhere along the top of your shoulder here. See if you can find your tight or sore spot there. Relax your right elbow and keep the pressure of your fingers pressing down and into your shoulder. Now tip your right ear over toward your right shoulder. Pause there and then come back up to the starting position. And then move your fingers slightly uh, toward your shoulder or slightly up toward your neck, slightly back or forward. Try four or five different spots. And you can move all the way up into the side of your neck here. Although mostly I think you're going to feel the best results if you focus on the top of the shoulder. Let's move on to the levator scapula muscle. That muscle is behind the upper trapezius muscle and it connects the top of your shoulder blade up into your neck here. So we need to wrap your arms around a little bit farther to reach that muscle. So your right index and middle finger find the top edge of your shoulder blade and then come just a little bit above that corner of your shoulder blade and sink your fingers down into the soft tissue. The movement of the head for pin and stretch in the levator scapula is a little different than it was for the upper trapezius. For this one, we'll tuck the chin down and then tip to the side a little bit and rotate to the side. So you're looking down and off to the side. So I'm looking down toward my right thigh and pause there and come back up. Now move your fingers up a little bit toward your neck, sink in, and again, tilt your head down and come back up. Keep trying different spots there. Try about four or five. The final spot is the suboccipital muscles. These muscles connect the base of your skull to the top of your neck, and they live right underneath in this soft spot on both sides. For the suboccipitals, it's, a, it's easier to use the hand on the same side instead of the opposite side. So for the left suboccipitals, I'll use my left index and middle finger and press right into that soft spot at the base of my skull. The movement here is a little bit of a chin tuck and then down. So think of your head rolling as opposed to bending forward this way. We actually want to roll. So you're giving yourself a double chin. So you press in and tuck your head down. Pause and then come back up. Now the suboccipitals cover a small area, so there isn't as much range to move around in as there was for the other two muscle groups. But you could still try moving slightly left or right or up really into the base of your skull or down into your neck a little bit. Um, play with it, see what feels best for you. Again, try about five repetitions, pressing those fingers in and tucking your head down. 
and come back up. Now with the suboccipitals, you could do the trigger point release on one side and then switch to the other side, or you could try doing it on both sides at the same time. So I'll show you that now. So with both, with the index and middle finger on both hands, I'll press into that soft spot, do a little chin tuck, and then roll my head and look down. Pause, and then come back up. And repeat, press in, Roll, look down, pause, and then come back up. Another variation for the suboccipitals is to add a little bit of rotation and side bend to it instead of just straight down. Press in, tuck, and tip slightly off to the side. That's similar motion to what I showed you for the levator scapula, except there's a lot more of a roll with the suboccipitals. So you really want that chin tuck and roll. Trigger points or muscle knots in the suboccipitals can contribute to headaches. So releasing that is a great way to relieve headaches. If you press too hard in that area, it can also aggravate a headache. Keep it light to start with, see how you feel, and then you can always add more pressure. You could do it once, or twice a day, as long as it doesn't trigger any further headaches or pain or discomfort. To achieve lasting trigger point release, you wanna keep doing this every single day. Everybody's different. Some people might only require a couple of sessions before that muscle fully releases. Other people may need to do these considerably longer. Also, posture makes a big difference. You can do all the releases you want, but if you continue shrugging your shoulders or carrying a bag on one side or sitting with forward head posture, those kinds of things, the trigger points will come right back again. So along with the trigger point release, watch your posture, watch how you hold yourself, how you carry items. See if you can make some adjustments to those things in order to achieve lasting results. I hope you found this trigger point release technique helpful to alleviate pain, headaches, and tightness in your neck. If you like this video, please click the thumbs up and consider subscribing to my channel. Leave any questions or comments down below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Here's to your healing, health, and happiness. Have a fantastic day.